Last night, the hit comedy Murphy Brown of the late 80s and 90s came back to life in a reboot. During the original run, one half-hour episode drew 70 million viewers. I visited their Washington, D.C. cable newsroom set in a New York City studio last week to see how times have changed and how some things are still the same. This is the bullpen of their morning show called Murphy in the Morning. Touring the new Murphy Brown set in Queens with 72-year-old Candace Bergen, I saw how her defining role as straight-talking TV newswoman Murphy Brown has stayed with her all these years, and how today's storyline is written to be on top of the news. See you next. Marker. There are some things that are exactly like what they were. They have gotten as close as possible to the original set that was 3,000 miles away and 30 years ago. It was clear that Murphy Brown's Georgetown living room had been updated with the Times, too, complete with journalist Bob Woodward's latest bestseller about the Trump White House, Fear. I sat down there with Bergen, who received five Emmy Awards for her role, and creator, writer, producer Diane English. So what made you think bringing it back was a great idea? Where did this come from? It came from Hillary losing. <laughs> yeah, we would not have really entertained the idea of coming back if she had won the election. And last night, the program brought on a surprise guest. Hello. I'm here to interview for the secretarial position. <laughs> Hillary? Yes, Hillary. Hillary Clendon. I assume you've had previous secretarial experience? Absolutely. For four years, I was the secretary uh, I was the secretary of a very large organization. Let me give you my card. Thank you. Hillary at youcouldahadme.com. Do you feel you have a mission uh, in what you're doing? We're not fanatics, if that's what you're <laughs> getting at. <laughs> well, I, I think that America would, would welcome hearing another point of view. We're living in a, in a country right now that is so divided, and it's not our intention to, you know, cause more division. But um, I think that facts really go missing, and that's a lot of what we're doing on the show, is really kind of presenting the facts. How has Murphy changed over these 20 years after? As news and entertainment began to merge, uh, I think she felt it was time to step down but retirement didn't really sit well with her. She doesn't like the hours of her new show, <laughs> which require her to get up in the darkness and go to bed in blazing sunlight. But um, she just hated being out of the game. And the game today, it's similar in some ways, but it's also very different, isn't it, as a, in, a, in a news environment? The press was very revered at that time, and our characters are members of the press. And now they're just being assaulted with fake news and enemy of the people. I mean, it's kind of horrifying that the press is polling lower than the president. Do you feel you can make these serious points and do it in a funny way? I mean, how do you do that? That's a real balancing act, isn't it? Well, that's the gift of being on this show. You get to do comedy and you, um, and you get to, to tackle really major issues. I mean, we did a, a Me Too episode that was very funny and, and very powerful. You have to come to the show socially engaged and aware of what's happening in the world in order to even participate. You're going to be reaching out to people who are on both sides of this yeah. divide. How do you think it's going to be received? You know, laughter reaches every demographic, you know, um, so I'm kind of counting on that. But my whole family voted for Trump, so I'm very sensitive to not necessarily uh, providing any kind of false equivalency, but Avery, her, her grown son, works for the Wolf Network. He's like, got a show on the Wolf Network, which is like the Fox Network. He's the liberal voice, but he's a character who spent a lot of time in the heartland covering the presidential campaign, and he understands people who feel like they've been uh, left behind. You're taking on some of the really hot issues of right now. You mentioned Me Too. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of it. Your own network, CBS, has had its issues. Mm -hmm. CEO 
leaving. Uh, and Candace Bergen, you were defending Les Moonves up until well into that. I was uh, up until the second uh, time, was it? Uh, it was the, uh, the New second Yorker. New Yorker yeah. piece. I had great respect for Les and liked him very much. It's new ground, and we haven't really walked much on this ground before, and, and so the, the boundaries are being defined as we speak. He was a great executive, and um, he turned this network around, so we both had a lot of respect for him in that regard. But uh, there's, there's no question uh, for us that we stand with all those women. Is there anything you won't touch? I don't think anything is off limits. The criteria for us is can we walk that tightrope with an issue that is serious but still make a comedy out of it? It was kind of our hallmark in the old days. You know, we never shied away from just having a, a very serious scene that didn't have any laughs in it at all. The midterm elections are front and center in the early episodes and add an immigration wrinkle to the storyline. Whatever your party is, mm -hmm. use your right to vote. And, and it's said by uh, a Mexican immigrant in the mm -hmm. show. A dreamer and who can't vote. There are six returning writers and some producers from the original crew. I still get tears in my eyes every time I'm introduced in, in curtain calls because it's, it's just so much. And it took two months to reconstruct the sets. And now, as some producers call it, the oldest crew in show business is back. And so is the studio audience. Mainstays of the original Murphy Brown newsroom have also returned. Faith Ford as Corky, Grant Shaw as Miles Silverberg, Joe Regalbudo as Frank Fontana. There are occasional appearances from Charlie Kimbrough as Jim Dial. Veteran actress Tyne Daly joins as the familiar bartender. Vice President Dan Quill citing Murphy Brown as an example. One original Murphy Brown episode is still talked about today and landed Bergen on the cover of Time magazine what everybody remembers about the show. They may remember a lot, but one thing they definitely remember is Murphy deciding to have a baby. It was 1992, and um, the Bob? vice president of the United States then, Dan Quayle, made a speech and went after Murphy Brown. It doesn't help matters when primetime TV has Murphy Brown, a character who supposedly epitomizes today's intelligent, highly paid professional woman, mocking the importance of fathers by bearing a child alone and calling it just another lifestyle choice. And calling it just another lifestyle choice. <laughs> um, you became a lightning rod uh, in 1992. I just stayed in. <laughs> really, it was overwhelming for me. I was just <laughs> on the show. We, in a very short form, debated whether she would keep the child, whether she would abort the child, right. and so it was not introduced casually in any way, and we really gave it uh, its weight. Are you prepared to, to uh, face that kind of political blowback now over other issues? Yeah. Do you think? I mean, we're, we're expecting it, you know, just because of the, you know, the mood of the country right now. And we know our president likes to t tweet, and so we are uh, expecting that maybe that, that will happen as well. So you kind of feel like you're home with this. I mean, you're oh, totally. back home. Totally. Between the sets and the cast, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Claire, Claire, thank you very much, Doc. Thank you. Thank